Well, I want to welcome Matthew Barnett with us today. If you don't know Matthew, he's a pastor and he's the founder of the Dream Center in L.A. Matthew, welcome. Good to be here. Thank you. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to connect with you today, though, is uh, you have a brand new book coming out, God's Dream for You, and I'm excited about this project. Can you share a little bit about what was the inspiration behind this new book? Well, the inspiration is really uh, a couple of things. First of all, I'm getting ready on September 8th to do a 24-hour outreach where for 24 straight hours from 1 p.m. on September 8th to no, 1 p.m. September 9th, um, we're going to visit all the places of outreach we've been to at the Dream Center all these years. We're going to Skid Row. We're going on search and rescue missions of the prostitutes in the middle of the night that we bring to the Dream Center and have their lives impacted and transformed. We're going to go doing hot dog carts all over the city, hygiene items for people that are homeless living on Venice Beach. I'm going to take a tour because it's really the book release is God's Dream for You on the 19th year of the anniversary of the Dream Center. And one of the things that I constantly have to do as a pastor is visit the places where lives are being changed. And uh, that's my reconnecting point. And so the book is really about how I was able to find God's dream for my life. Can I tell you, Tony, that my dream died along the way? I had it all figured out. I had a five-year plan when I came to L.A. of how the church was going to be. And I was going to preach great sermons and people were going to show up because I was ready to preach. And then I realized that my dream had to die in order to find God's dream for my life. And in the book, we really talk about process of transformation. In 19 years of working with people, what has been the secret of taking people that come into the dream center with nothing but maybe a homeless family with a car that shows up on our doorstep or a trafficking victim that was just rescued in the middle of a raid in the middle of the night? And we begin to find that these people begin to move beyond survival and into thriving. And the reason why they did was they begin to find God's dream for your life. And so in the book, we deal with um, um, taking radical steps of inconvenience to find um, the dream you are more, you're, you're meant to live for, um, issues of forgiveness that block God's dream for our life, and all kinds of different avenues. But I think the most important thing of the book is um, also telling people not to quit. So sometimes you can only give God one more day. And if you stay in that one day long enough, that one day can turn into a miracle. And so a lot of it's based upon um, the dream of mine that died along the way. And what are the steps to find God's dream? And there were a lot of steps to find God's dream because the reality is, Sometimes our dream has to die to find the dream that God ultimately had for us. And um, it happened in my life just by letting God unpack the layers of myself that were there that I didn't know that were there. You know, layers of ambitions and, and things that I, I thought that I wanted for my life. And when all that was gone, when I inherited a church of 18 people, and we went down to two and I was so discouraged and all I had left was a walk in the park. That's when I realized that my dream died. And it opened up the door to God's dream. And it's so different than anything I could put on paper. And so the book is a lot about the roads that we take in life and how when we submit whatever we have left to God that is broken, um, it puts us on a path and it's oftentimes different than anything we ever had because we're living God's dream. One of the things I love about the book, Matthew, is in addition to sharing some great biblical principles about the transformation that we can all experience in our lives, you share some very profound stories of people yeah. that have experienced that transformation. Do you, do you want to share one or two of those stories with us today? Yeah, well, we have so many of the stories that uh, people whose lives have been changed. You know, as you look over the, the path of the Dream Center, uh, we've had guys living under bridges for 15 years. That uh, That's all they've known was living under a bridge, and all of a sudden his life was transformed and checked into our rehab program after living under a bridge for 15 years. We've got guys that were sentenced to us for juvenile hall, and um, one of the kids, actually, um, he, we found drugs on him, so he smoked, he just ripped out a page of the Bible, rolled it into a joint, and smoked the pages of the Bible. And, but the problem was he was reading those pages before he smoked it, and then he asked questions about it, and he ended up giving his life to Jesus Christ. And, and you know, young kids that are modern-day orphans, 15-, 16-year-old kids that show up on the doorstep of the Dream Center, and, um, and all these lives that are just being impacted on a day-by-day -day basis. And so the book is about... People that are at the very end of the road, and what does it look like when you come to the end of the road? It really opens up the door to a brand new road. And I think sometimes we think that life is over um, at the point of our pain or our greatest regret or our greatest fear. But the reality is that's oftentimes when life really begun, where it really starts, because that's when God has your attention, and that's when you can do the greatest work of your life.
As you look back either at your journey or some of the other people that have been impacted by the ministry at the Dream Center, what would you say is the biggest obstacle that people face when it comes to fulfilling God's dream in their life? Survival. I think people think that they have to that surviving is thriving, and, don't, and they don't realize that there's a whole other layer to life. The first question we ask people when they come into the Dream Center, if they're homeless, they got nothing left, or whatever situation that brings them into recovery, is what is your dream? And can I tell you, Tony, that question shocks people. They look at us like, how dare you ask us the question, what is your dream? And we, we tell them, look, don't worry about survival. You got three meals, you got a bed, you got a case manager. There's no reason for you not to succeed. What is your dream? And the moment we ask that question, it, it immediately changes the level of expectation of what they see their life becoming because we're asking questions on a higher plane. And uh, that's what we encourage people to do. When people come to the Dream Center, they might not have an ad addiction, but they want to change their city. They want to impact it. You know, so I tell the pastors, what is your dream for your city? What do you want to see happen? And we often, we often move in the directions of the questions by which we ask. And um, can this be done? You know, and, 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 and the key is um, asking questions that pertain to faith and seeing the road that it leads us on. And so survival is one of the greatest things that, that hold us back, I believe, from reaching uh, God's dream for our life. Because God's dream is one of thriving, it's of making a difference. And, but a lot of people just think, I don't have much to give, God. I have nothing, I have no starting point or, or I have no ending point. And so we view being used of God as some kind of a place. If I had this, then I'll do it. When the reality is every great thing happens by responding to one need and stepping out, and then it begins to unfold in front of you. So let me turn the tables on you. You're 19 years into this ministry. God's obviously blessed in many ways along the way. So, Matthew, what is your dream as you sit there today? My dream, I was looking over the Hollywood sign the other day from the rooftop of the Dream Center, and I said, God, I'd like to have 5,000 people in this community who live all around this area. We have about 750 now. We're doing good. But I'd like to have 5,000 transformed lives in the city, building from the Dream Center all the way up to Hollywood that could make such an impact in the community that the world would look at Los Angeles and they would change their perception of what it's known for. You know, unfortunately, uh, we don't get the Hollywood dream type of kids. We get the ones that chase the false illusion and show them that the people that have been lost in the cracks of L.A., they ran away from home, they ended up in the game, that God is rebuilding a generation. And uh, the City of Angels has a whole different meaning because it's practical people making a difference in the name of Christ and changing the community. You know, we've seen crime drop 73% in our neighborhood, three-year period of time. We went from second of worst crime in Los Angeles to one of the new 50 livable communities in the United States of America. So when God's people are hitting a neighborhood like that for 19 years, we're changing the atmosphere of the community and earning the right to be heard. And those are two things that we teach, changing the atmosphere by staying longer than the liquor stores in the pimps and earning the right to be heard by having a consistent voice and being there for the people. Well, Matthew's new book, it's called God's Dream for You. It comes out in September. You can pre-order it today on Amazon. But Matthew, I'm also curious if people want to follow the Serve24 campaign. Is there some place you can send them? Well, um, the hashtag, is, um, they can go to the dreamcenter.org website, and then on Twitter they can hashtag Serve24. Um, I'm going to be on a Matt Lauer show next week on uh, Today's show, actually talking about the Serve24 and what's going to happen. And can I tell you, Tony, I think the most exciting thing about it, you know, it's a fun 24-hour thing, but every time I go on these excursions, whether it be living homeless on Skid Row that I did on my 15th year anniversary or do a 24-hour outreach, every time the Dream Center is never the same because when our church gets out there and does something radical like serving for 24 hours, we all get vision. I tell people inspiration is found on the mountaintop or if you hear a good sermon, and that's where you get inspiration. But all the, the vision that you need is found in the valley. And that's when you see the hurt and you see the need. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next at the Dream Center because of the encounters and the people that we meet and uh, the level of brokenness that I know is going to come in our heart. That's a good word. Thank you, Matthew, for joining us today. It was great to have you. What an honor. What a blessing. Thank you so much for getting behind this Serve 24 campaign in the book. God bless you.